This is Patsy from Real Property Management Fairmate. Uh, we do property management. Uh, today's topic is about all the rain damage and water issues that we have uh, during this heavy rainstorm. And this is G. Gerardo, help us explain the problems and solutions that he encountered. Take it away, G. Hello, everyone. Obviously, I'm G. Gutierrez with Real Property Management, and I am a licensed contractor in the state of California, and we co cover all of Southern California. Now, everybody knows that Southern California got hit with historic rainfall in the last uh, 60 days here at the end of 2022 and the start of 2023. And with that, we saw many issues at our properties and some of the issues uh, could have been averted and other issues we responded quickly and urgently to make sure that the properties were not damaged or to minimize the damage at the properties. Um, some of the things that we saw uh, with the water problems were uh, the roof maintenance on gutters. Um, we saw while the rains were coming that uh, we got calls on sometimes gutters that hadn't been serviced in quite some time. They had debris in them and they were causing water to either seep into the roof or fall over into an area that the water was not designed to fall over in. Uh, the downspouts, we saw that sometimes the downspouts were damaged and or in locations where it was causing either flooding or water issues. Um, obviously, we responded to all of these calls as quickly as possible. Uh, we cleaned out a lot of gutters this year, um, both before, during, and after the rains, um, just to make sure that uh, some, of the some of the properties that were having issues uh, were taken care of. Um, in other instances, we advised owners to install gutters and or downspouts in areas uh, so that the water issues would not affect their property. Uh, Patsy, you were going to ask about a specific property? Yes, we have a new property that uh, we take over to manage, and we found that we have too many vegetations right up to the foot of the property. The walls and the cross space hole is too close or too low. That causes a lot of problem flooding in the basement and also getting mold and mildew inside the bedrooms because the drain uh, is not properly laid away or diverted to far further away from the property. Yes, correct. That is an issue, a specific issue we saw in a couple of our properties. One specific one that comes to mind, the property has a crawl space, which in California is very common. A lot of our homes have crawl spaces. And this particular crawl space uh, was getting a lot of water uh, diverted into the crawl space and it, it had no outlet to leave the crawl space so it was going up on the crawl space foot foot and a half so we had to go in and we had to remediate that water out of the crawl space and also remediate some damage that caused to the flooring and the drywall because that moisture seeped in, up into the uh, wood and the walls so this is one that we responded quickly and we gave the uh, property owner some solutions, uh, including uh, installing um, a cement French drain up against the wall of the exterior wall of the house where most of the water was coming in, also installing gutters on that side of the wall and diverting that water 10 to 15 feet away from the property. We also walked the property and identified certain places where the vegetation was too close to the walls, the stucco walls, the property and we helped by moving that vegetation away from the property so that it would not damage or cause extra damage against the exterior walls. And also we have another interesting one is that uh, there was a chimney uh, on the property and somehow all his relatives <laughs> were trying to fix the problem. They, they, just, they just put some, some tar and some cement in there and, uh, and lo and behold, all the water sipped in back from the outside planter just came up from the floor. Yeah, yeah I, I know it, it, it sounds a little funny right now, but it, obviously when the tenant is going through those issues and the owner hears a wall of water entering their, their house, it's not a funny situation. But uh, we went out there and we uh, quickly identified uh, they have a planter that is right up against the wall of both <laughs> the chimney fireplace and also the stucco. We quickly obviously helped remediate that water and we sent a solution to the owner. We sent them a couple options and they chose the option of uh, wanting to keep the planter, but we are going to install vinyl siding system with tar that will help protect both the stucco 
and the fireplace and the chimney from water intrusion. And that should last them, you know, quite a long time. And they'll be able to keep their planter there and, and keep their landscaping in shape. So sometimes there is a way to keep landscaping close to, to the property, but it has to be done correctly. If you hire a handyman just to put a little tar and a little cement, uh, most likely you're going to get water that, that seeps into the house and that could create major issues, major damage. And that's what we don't want. We don't want mildew problems. We don't want you know, the bad word mold problems. We want to uh, keep that water away from the house, away from the drywall, away from any part of the inside of the house. Yes, there's another issue that we have skylights uh, and also some of the uh, windows and also a vent that goes up to the rooftop and the wind blew up the, the caps and the water just come directly from the pipe into the, the unit. Yeah, with historic rains, you start seeing if there was a small issue in the skylights, all of a sudden it becomes a big issue. Um, it, it is very important when you hire uh, roofers to hire licensed and insured roofers and that they know what they're doing. Sometimes uh, you might think you may be getting a great deal by somebody, Joe Handyman, that says, hey, I can, you know, redo your roof. But, um, you know, when, when we get up there, we saw a lot of roof installations weren't done properly uh, where the skylight uh, meets the, the asphalt shingles. And we ended up doing quite a few repairs on both um, skylights uh, this year because, you know, the roof installer or whoever they had sent to patch the roof in previous times had not done a proper job. And, um, you know, it, the flashing around these skylights, it, it needs to be done properly and it needs to be tucked in into the shingles properly. Tar paper needs to be used, felt paper some people call it properly, and, and we need to have a proper install by someone that knows what they're doing. That way, we can avoid some of the issues that these houses had with water intrusion into the skylights and us having to go out there in the middle of the rain to help out these properties at, at times. Yes, and a lot of times when, what we do is after they finish the work, you go out and actually physically check uh, the work that is being done to make sure that uh, it is done properly because it's hard to get up on the roof. <laughs> yeah, correct. Uh, a lot of times correct. You it's hard to get up there when, when it rains, but uh, we do everything up to code, to city, state, county code standards. In instances where we need to get a permit, we will get a permit. In instances where it's an emergency repair, we can take pictures and we can uh, obviously show it to an inspector if need be. And all the work is done up to code and would pass inspection in any uh, city or county. Yes. Um, the last thing I could recall is that there are a lot of subterranean parking issues. When the water comes in from groundwater, there's really not much you can do except making sure that the sub pump is working and the sewer line, uh, the drain line is cleared out. If you have water coming through a subterranean groundwater, the only thing you can do is redirect uh, the the water is going to come and they're going to get it at the low point and there really is not much you can <laughs> you, yeah. you can work with on the water uh, they they take over they they are very powerful powerful source yeah. so preventative measure is very important and we try to schedule all the preventative uh, maintenance beforehand instead of well when it rains you can't do anything you can just only put a bucket underneath the leak <laughs> until it is dried out so that's uh, very frustrating for, for the owners and also for the tenants and for us too, because we, we feel the pressure, right? Yes, correct. It's very important for uh, owners and investors to remember that not only do we uh, snake clogged drain lines to the house, but we also snake clogged drain lines that uh, serve uh, to drain water off the property. Uh, and those need to be kept up and proper inspection, uh, usually a yearly inspection on those would serve a great measure uh, to keep water from, from damaging your property. Uh, with sump pumps, uh, a yearly inspection on those sump pumps also works great. Uh, we've inherited properties that didn't have an inspection uh, measure in place. And when they came with our properties, we've put them on an inspection schedule for their sump pumps because we have seen them fail. And when it fails, it's not pretty. It, it, you know, you'll have water rise up quickly, two to three feet. Um, you know, I, just this year, I was uh, swimming around in a, in a three foot pool right in front of the property and almost made it into the property, but we were able to, to work quickly to pump that water out. Yeah, that was some quick measure that was <laughs> before they ran out of pumps. <laughs> That's good. Okay, so uh, that concludes our session this time. Uh, so we look forward to the next session of maintenance issues. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Patsy.